All right, guys, what's up? Section 7 here of Chapter 2, and you can see I didn't actually put the essential question on here because I don't want to give away what this video is kind of about, but you see on the screen it says, let's take a stroll back memory lane, down memory lane, to a little place we like to call Algebra 1. And here's the scoop. Okay, in Algebra 1, you were presented with this particular property where you had something where A implies B, something like that. There could be numbers, it doesn't matter. And then you had something like B, I'm saying imply, but I meant equal. A equals B and B equals C. The question is, if these two things were true, what else could we conclude? And yes, you use something very important in Algebra 1 to conclude the following. Do you got it? That A equals C. And yes, what that property is, you got it. I hear you saying it. It's called the transitive property. You can take A to B and B to C and say, well, wait, these two things are congruent and or equal because if they're equal to the same thing, well, then A and C have to be equal. That is an absolute transitive property. So under your foldable, you need to write the word transitive property. And just so you know, there is going to be another property that's going to be after this one that goes in here. So you don't, put, you don't need to put the line. Just leave it blank. So put transitive, pro transitive way on the left, leave it blank, and then put props over here on the right. And what you need to do is open up that part of the foldable. And what you need to write into the transitive property flap is the first theorem, theorem 16. And it says this. And by the way, hint for you, write this kind of small because there's going to be two theorems for the transitive property, theorem 16 and theorem 17. So write this one kind of small, have enough room for the second one, and the example that I'm going to give you. So don't write too big on this part of the foldable. So here's what theorem 16 says. If angles, or they could be segments, are congruent to the same angle or segment, then they are congruent to each other. So yes, this particular property that you learned in Algebra 1 applies to numbers and letters, but it also applies to pictures with angles and segments and other things too. So this picture that came up here on your screen, you need to jot that down. So pause the video and jot it down. And I'm going to use this same exact picture with many different examples throughout this video. So just write it down one time. And then with all the other examples, like I said, I do, you'll be able to put what's given and what we're trying to conclude and the idea behind it and learn how these transitive properties and the other property that we talk about actually works. All righty? Rock and roll, guys. Let's go to do an example. So let's go to that part of the foldable where you're on that. And let's uh, use this and get some given information. Okay, so here's your picture. Notice what I have. I have two different examples. Here's example number one on the left here. This is example number one. This is example number two. So example one, using this particular picture, it says given angle one, which is right here, angle one congruent to angle two, which is this way. I'll put the tick marks on there. Beautiful. And then it also says, oh, look, angle two is congruent to angle four. So two is also congruent to four. Now, when you put the tick marks in here, guys, you can actually see all the tick marks are the same. Don't worry about the color, but they are exactly the same. So what your conclusion could be is this. If I have two angles, one and four, that are congruent to the same exact angle, then these two angles, one and four, are congruent to each other. Beautiful. So my conclusion would be angle one would be congruent to angle four. And if I was doing this in a two-column proof, this would be a step. Say we would say step number two. And my reason over here would say transitive property. That's it. That would be my reason. The reason that this is true is because of the transitive property. And by the way, another little thing, if you look at how this works, basically what you're doing is you're just linking these things together. So you can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, which is congruent to angle 4. So then you could conclude that 1 is congruent to 4. That looks very similar to the thing we, we talked about called the chain of reasoning, by the way. Mm -hmm. So here's a second example. These are just segments. So if I go back to the second example, let me erase all this. I'll erase all of this. So we get a fresh look at the picture. Okay, so we got FG, that segment, here it is, FG, is congruent to KG, that's this one right here, wow. So those two guys are congruent. And then it says, at the same time, GH, this guy, is congruent to KG. Well, if that's the case, if I have two segments that's congruent to the same segment, well, then my conclusion would be FG is congruent to GH. I could conclude that this thing is congruent to that thing right there, that segment. So beautiful. That's the transitive property. That's the first of two transitive properties. The concept applies 
um, which whatever it was, theorem 16. So let's go back to our foldable and get the next theorem, which is theorem 17, which is still another transitive property. So transitive property number two. Again, this still goes on the same part of the actual flap on the foldable. It is theorem 17. Now this one says, hey, if I have angles that are congruent to congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. Or they could be segments. So if segments are congruent to congruent segments, then they're congruent to each other. So we're going to use this picture again. It's the same picture that you had before. So let's cut back to an example so I can show you what that's about. So same picture that's marked up, and here's different given information, so you can write that down in your foldable. So here's the scoop, illustrating this last transitive property that I just showed you. If we have angle 1, that's this guy right here, angle 1, that's congruent to angle 3. There's your tick marks. And I have angle 4 over here, congruent to angle 2 right there. Well, there's all kinds of tick marks on here. And then this last one down here says, wait, what about angle 3 and angle 2? Let's say, let's say that they're congruent. Well, here's what the transitive property says. If I have all this stuff going on, it says if I actually have two different angles, 1 and 4, that's these guys, angle 1 and angle 4. If I have two different angles that are congruent to two other angles that are congruent, whoa, and that's this right there. So I know that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent, hence the tick marks right here. So if two angles, 1 and 4, are congruent to two other angles that are already congruent, whew, that means angle 1 will be congruent to angle 4. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my actual conclusion over here. I would say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Now, if you don't see this, this is exactly how it works. You actually would start with angle 1. I'll put it up here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, as it says. But then come down here to this one. So we've got angle 1 congruent to angle 3. Then check this out. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 2. Uh-oh. Angle 2. And then check this out. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Uh-oh. Yes, you are exactly correct. It looks exactly like our chain of reasoning. It's exactly what it is. I can link all these things together. So my first thing I can start with is say, wait a minute. Let's just go with angle 1 being congruent to the last one right here of angle 4. That's exactly it. That's what the transitive property is. When you can link things together, congruent to congruent to congruent to congruent to congruent, and then link the first and the last, those guys, that's a transitive property. So there's the first thing about transitive property that goes in your foldable. So let's go to the last little piece of this little flap for your foldable, and we'll be finished with the foldable. All right, guys, here we go. Last part of the little foldable there, the little piece we got to fill in with the last flap on the foldable is, I don't know if you guys ever played basketball or you played basketball for the school or ever watched a basketball game, but at some point during the game, inevitably, You'll hear this sound multiple, multiple times during the actual game. And I don't know if you'll hear it through the speakers or not, but here we go. I'll make it louder. Louder. Yeah, well, it's the horn. And I know it doesn't sound like that, but, but it goes. What is that for? Well, it could mean many different things. It could mean the end of the game. It could mean, you know, that there was a foul. It could mean that there is, oh, a substitution. Yes, and that is the last property called the substitution property. And here's the idea behind well, here's the idea behind the substitution property. Here's the basketball court, and I want you to understand this. You know, I mean, you know when there's a basketball game going on, I mean, the court never changes. The court stays the same. It doesn't change colors, it doesn't it doesn't go from wood to like, you know, concrete. It stays exactly the same. In fact, here's the scoop of the substitution property. When you have your five people out there on the court, there is nothing at all that changes. The jerseys don't change. The ball doesn't change. The crowd doesn't change. Nothing changes except one particular thing. So when you come flying in here, like you'll see in the screen, woo, and you substitute boom, in for that guy, that's the only thing that changes. That's it. One thing. Now, I'm taking 30 extra seconds on this to make sure you understand. When you use a substitution property, there is nothing else that changes at all except for one thing. Like when you come in here again, you bump that person out, there's only one thing that's changing. So that being said, let me show you the actual substitution property on this part of the foldable flap. So put the substitution property in there, put it right there. So we got the last part of this foldable, transitive property and substitution property. And here we go, let me give you the example. So it's the same picture, different given information though, of course, and here's the given. You have angle one, is supplementary to angle 5. So angle 1 here is supplementary way over here to this one. So they don't form a straight angle, 
but they are, I guess, apparently adding to 180 degrees. That's cool. The other thing that you know is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. That's the other piece of information that you know. Now, the only other conclusion that you can come up with using this thing called the substitution property, guys, is this. You can take angle 4, which would be you, the person that's being substituted into the basketball example, and you're going to go, because you are equivalent to angle 1, you're exactly the same as angle 1, so there's no different, so you're going to substitute yourself right in here, and my new conclusion would be that angle 4 is supplementary to angle 5. So notice this. Actually, I should probably do this. Let me just make the colors exactly the way it is. So nothing at all changes in this particular thing except the angle 1. So angle 5 is staying the same. The supplementary will change this. The supplementary, that thing right there is staying the same. Nothing changes. So you see this right here is exactly the same. That is the other one, two, three, four members of the basketball team. Huh. The only thing that's changing, guys, is angle 1 is going off the court and angle 4 is going into the court. You're substituting angle 4 in for angle 1. Why? Because they are equivalent. They're exactly equal to each other. So that would be your new conclusion right there. Notice, there is no way that I can link this stuff together like the chain of reasoning like we did with the transitive property. So substitution is definitely a little different. And yes, you do use it many times in two-column proof. So I would encourage you guys, look at your sample problems. Use those tremendously um, because they're going to really help you understand when and you, you can use a transitive and a substitution property and get a feel for what's going on. So pumped up, man. We are going to practice these things in class, and we will see you guys later. Peace.